Rendering images or animations in Blender doesn't have to be as slow as 90s dial-up. Just by making a few simple changes to our render settings, we can crunch frames down from minutes to seconds. And in this video, I will show you how I do it. Just before we dive into the main event, here's a quick rundown of my setup. I'm using Blender 4.2 with a Windows operating system and an NVIDIA graphics card, and I will be using the Cycles render engine. I'm going to start us off with this image that I've already rendered out, and it was using the default settings that I had in the software. Um, plus, it was only using my CPU to process. So it's come out at 1 minute 23 for this single image, which if you're doing animations is nowhere near optimal. Also, the image is quite grainy, so that's not perfect for me. So let's go back to the software uh, where I've got my scene set up and let's make one quick change and see how much difference this will make. So we're going to go to Edit and Preferences. And we're going to enable the GPU, so that's the graphics processing unit. And we're going to make sure that we encourage Blender to use the GPU to do all the computations that we need it to do. So I'll just save those preferences, close that down. And then without making any other changes here, I'm going to send that to render again and see what difference it makes. So just by changing from my CPU to GPU, I've managed to get that time, render time, down from 1 minute 23 to just under 12 seconds. Now that's a massive improvement. Still a bit grainy here though, so let's see what we can do to change that and to see if we can get any more speed savings. Now the next setting under render properties I will show you is the noise threshold. Now. We've got two settings here, one for the viewport and one for render. So we've got viewport here and render will be the rendered image. So we need to adjust anything that says render. Now noise threshold, the default is 0 0.01, which gives ridiculously long render speeds. So I was rendering on 0.1, as you saw there. But I'm going to change that to 0.5. And I'm going to make one other change as well. I'm going to enable denoising. And I'm going to use my optics um, processing in the GPU to deal with that. So that's just those two changes. And let's see if that's made a difference. So there we go. We've already shaved off another couple of seconds just by changing those two small settings. We're down to now nine seconds per frame which is a huge improvement from 1 minute 23 seconds as you can imagine. Let's see if there's anything else we can do. So with light paths these are the defaults which are okay but we might be able to get a little bit faster if we go for fast global illumination. That decreases these settings as you see here. Now we've got a slight problem though with the translucent materials, the shadows are coming out as if um, this is a solid object. So although this is probably going to speed up, or sorry, decrease our render time. No, hang on. It's going to make our render times worse slightly. We're going to enable reflective and refractive. And you can see now that shadow has m softened a lot more because it's a translucent object. So let's send that through again. Our time to beat this time was nine seconds. And it worked. This time it came out at just under seven seconds. So that's six seconds and 53 whatevers. Now I did have fast GI approximation enabled. And that basically enables me to counteract any of the negative impact that reducing these light bounces has. So if I enable that again, I've got replace 
I've got the ambient occlusion factor set as default. And the viewport bounces, that's the amount of light bounces around the scene, I've increased to 2. Because if I decrease this, the max bounces here, I need to increase them here to counteract that. Now we can also simplify the scene and the render. The default subdivisions are 6. I've decreased them to 3 here. And I've also got culling enabled. Now this reduces the distance from the camera that objects are rendered. So if they're further away than this distance, then it won't put as much computational power into them. Probably even ignore them. So let's see if that gives us any improvements. So our time to beat was just under 7 seconds. And we're now just under six seconds. So as you can see, each of these changes, we're shaving off time for each frame. So as opposed to 1 minute 23 per frame, we're now getting just under six seconds per frame, which is a massive improvement, especially if we are doing um, animations. Now one other change I'm going to make and see if it makes a difference is under acceleration structure I'm going to use curves BVH now it says here it uses more RAM but it renders faster so let's see if it does our time to beat this time was just under six seconds now this has actually pushed it just over six seconds so enabling that didn't really improve our render time. <coughs> Excuse me. One final change, and this really only uh, relates to animations, is under Final Render, enabling persistent data um, basically means that the that Blender remembers surfaces, textures, and all that kind of stuff from frame to frame. So the first frame will take as long as it takes and then each subsequent frame should take less time because it's remembering how things are interacting how light is interacting with each of the surfaces and the materials that we've got so that's one way of increasing the uh, or improving the render time on animations now those settings as you see have made a huge impact obviously you may need to adjust them slightly depending on your scene and on your needs and preferences but Hopefully that will give you an idea of where to go to try and improve, improve the render times in Blender. Now if you found this video useful please remember to give it a thumbs up and of course like, uh, subscribe for notifications of future videos from me. In the meantime thanks for watching.